As you take your chair, praise God. We're talking about living the blessed life. Somebody say blessed life. How many of y'all live in the blessed life? Come on. Everybody better be lifting their hands up. Now, yes, ma'am. Absolutely, Sister Linda got two hands up. Praise the Lord. She is living the blessed life. So is Sister Pat and so is everybody else in this house. If you have Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, and who does? Who does in this house? Lift your hands up. Come on. If you have Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, you have no business in the cursings. That's what I want to say. You have no business flowing, operating, and functioning in a cursed life. No business. See, you used to, when you didn't have Jesus in your life, you used to flow and operate in a cursed life. But you don't anymore. Somebody say, I don't anymore. anymore. See, and and you've got to learn to tell yourself that because if you don't, if you don't keep reminding yourself that you're living a blessed life, you're going to accidentally flow and operate in that cursed life without even knowing it. I was talking about this Thursday night, Brother Albert, that there are three groups of people who have a relationship with the blessing. I said, the first one is those who don't know that they're in the blessing. They don't have knowledge of it. What I mean by that, I said, these are people who who have come to Jesus but are still operating in a cursed system. Okay, are are you with me? These are people that are still, uh, because they have a lack of knowledge, and the word says that. My people perish for the lack of knowledge. It's because you don't know the blessing. You haven't been taught about the blessing. So you're still trying to function and operate in a cursed system. (laughs) Come on. When you should be operating in the blessed system of the kingdom of God. Anybody with me in this house? Amen. So you have a blessed life, family. You are not living a cursed life. That means that everything you do should work. We had toilet problems going on last weekend. And because we've had people possibly sticking things down in the toilet that shouldn't be stuck in there, right? It happens. But let me just give you a public service announcement. Please, if you're going to use the restrooms in this facility, there's, there's, there's even a sign there. In front, right? I, somebody said you need to kind of put flashing lights, maybe an electrocution. No. So the so, but the thing is, we we okay. So the system, the 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 water system itself might be having some some things going on, but we don't need to help the worsening by sticking stuff down in there. Okay, guys. So let me just tell y'all, guys. And I'm talking to teenagers as well. Okay, teens up in here. There's no reason for like six of y'all to go in the restroom at the same time. The adults are like, well, we do that too. No. <laughs> okay, so, no, no, no. Right, so, hey, you guys take care of this facility. Let me tell you why. We rent this building out. This building is not ours. So here's what Jesus says. Be faithful in the little or take care of the little and God will provide us with the big. And the little of this place right now is, the part of it is the restrooms. Like, where, how do we go from the blessing to the toilet? It's because it's a PSA, a public service announcement. Are y'all with me? Okay, everybody. I'm not just looking at any specific people. I'm just saying all of us in here got to take care of that. Because this building belongs to somebody else. We're just blessed to have somebody allow us to have services in this house. And you know what? God's going to restore, recover, and reward them. All right, but come on, amen. But we don't need to help the cursing by throwing stuff in there. Okay, guys, so let's take care of what belongs to somebody else. Ultimately, it's God's. So let's take care of God's property. Amen. So, but you know what? It got restored. It got fixed. The toilets were acting up. We had somebody come in here with one of those rotor rooter things. Is that what it is? But it turns and it pushes. I was like, man, I need one of those for my spirit. No, just kidding. So, you know, as that happened, and then, you know, it got fixed. Praise the Lord. Now, this morning, family, watch this. 
our laptop back there was trying to act up. And it did. It burped a couple of times. It hiccuped a couple of times. But as I was sitting right here, seriously, as I was worshiping, some of y'all need to learn something here. Watch this. As I was worshiping, God said, go back there and go lay hands on it and command it to work. That's what I heard the Lord tell me. I was, I was right here. Sister Gina, you see me? I'll walk back there. And what did I do? I laid hands on it, right? Come on. And what did I do? I commanded that thing to start working, right? I said, you're going to work in Jesus' mighty name. That's what I said. You turned it back on. Here's what I love about Sister Gina back there. She just didn't let that thing say, well, I'm not going to work today, Gina. So leave me alone. And that's it. No, she kept trying. Did y'all see the screen keep coming up? She kept trying. She kept trying. That's what I told my wife. I said, you know what? Just because that computer's not working, that computer does not tell us what to do. Amen. That computer is not going to command me. No, no, no. We're going to keep trying. You got keep trying. Well, it doesn't work, Pastor, but keep trying. Oh, we can't do it. Keep trying. Keep at it. Don't be giving in to that mess. That just represents how much you give up to other messes. But she didn't stop. And she didn't quit. And God told me to give me an instruction, so I walked back there and I did it. Boom, that computer's working. Come on. Why? Because we're living the blessed life. Everything we do works. Everything. It doesn't matter what it is. Sister Gina, you have blessed hands. You're living a blessed life. The Bible says that because you're blessed, everything you lay your hands on will prosper. Amen. Everything you lay your hands on will work. So some of us need to lay our hands on our teenagers so they can go to work, right? Praise. They'll work. They'll go work. Praise God. Are y'all with me this morning? And I'm not being boastful or prideful. I'm, 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 not, I'm saying the confidence in the blessing that God put upon us, we need to use it. It's not just for you to sit there and tell people that I'm blessed and you never do anything. No, it's, 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 it's for, the purpose is for us to use it and demonstrate to people, my gosh, you didn't have to send it to Best Buy to the geek world or whatever they call it. What's it called? The geek squad. You didn't have to send it to the geek squad. No, we're the blessed squad here. Praise God. I got Best Buy right here in the palm of my hands. Y'all got to get this. You have the blessed life in the palm of your hand, in your mouth. <laughs> we got Aaron over here who want to lay hands on everything. Toaster, refrigerator, microwave, car, TV. It'll work. It'll work. According to that faith, let it be done. Are y'all with me? Huh? Come on, let's give God a praise. Are you with me? Amen. So watch this. Let's go into Galatians chapter 3 and let's see this because I want you to see. But I don't want you to just to see. I also want you to say. I don't just want you to say. I want you to seize. See, say, seize. You know what it means to seize? What does it mean to seize, Brother Raymond? To take over, to go ahead and get it. When, when the police used to seize your drugs, y'all remember that? Okay. That means they used to take it from you. And put it up somewhere. Seize. So here we go. Galatians chapter 3. I know it's a bad, bad. Anyways, here we go. Galatians chapter 3. King James translation. Watch this. Christ. Someone say Jesus. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Mm -mm -mm. Being made a curse for us. It is written... Cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree. Watch this. That the blessing of Abraham. How many seeds of Abraham do we have in this house this morning? Come on, how many seeds of Abraham? You are the seed of Abraham. That means that you have the blessing of Abraham operating in your life. Because it says here that the blessing, so that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles. You know who the Gentiles were? Us. Another word for Gentile is heathen. How many used to be ex-heathens we have in this house? <laughs> Amen. That means it's talking about us, right? We are the Gentiles, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through who? Jesus and only through Jesus Christ. 
Okay, that means to tell me that if you are a believer in this house, you have Jesus. You went through Jesus to get to the Father. How many of you had to go through Jesus to get to the Father? Okay, that means that the blessing of Abraham is on you and in you and operating in you. Watch this. And that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Praise God. Not only do you flow in the blessing, but you also flow the spirit of God. That is the blessing inside you. He is the guarantee or he is the promised inheritance inside you. When the spirit of God moved inside you and kicked out sin, the blessing showed up. Because watch, sin, sin was the way that obedience could not be enabled. Inability to obey God. That's what sin was. Sin shut it down once, uh, uh, once Adam got kicked out of the garden. Sin showed up. He had to kick him out because now he was not able to obey God. Are you with me? You could not obey God before Jesus Christ showed up in your life. And before Jesus Christ showed up in your life, the curse was running rampant. The curse was your master. The curse life. That's why things in your life didn't work out. That's why you were going down a tumbling hill. That's why you were going through things that you didn't know how to get out of until Jesus showed up on the scene. And when Jesus showed up on the scene, the blessing showed up. That means that everything works now. And you don't have an excuse and you can't blame anybody else because of things that are not working in your life. If you're going to blame somebody, blame the spirit of God inside and say, you know what, we got to correct this. Are y'all with me? So you can't think cursed anymore. You can't. Can you identify the cursed things in your life? Can you? All right. Then you need to stay away from that stuff. Because as long as that stuff is operating in your life, it's bringing contamination to the blessing. As a matter of fact, instead of the blessing growing, the blessing is being stunted and being pushed down. Mm hmm. Yes. Yes. I say yes. yes. <sighs> Praise God. Watch this. Let's go. Let's go to verse six in Galatians chapter three, verse six, New Living Translation. In the same way, Abraham believed God and God counted him as righteous because of his faith. How many have faith in here? OK, because of your faith, you've been counted righteous too. righteousness. Righteousness means Right. Things get right now. Things get right. That's why there are people who come to Jesus. Watch this. And they keep trying to do the wrong thing. And the more they keep doing the wrong thing, the emptier they get. Because there, there is no pleasure in that. Are you with me? Come on. Okay, so. Here it is. In the same way Abraham believed God and God counted him as righteous because of his faith, the real children of Abraham then are those who put their faith in God. The real children of Abraham are those who put their faith in God. Praise God. What's more, the scriptures look forward to this time when God would make the Gentiles right in his sight because of their faith. Gosh, God proclaimed this good news to Abraham long ago when he said, all nations will be blessed through you. So all who put their faith in Christ share the same blessing Abraham received because of his faith. Oh, my gosh. You guys are living a blessed life. Life. Now, you know, I could, I was looking at it this morning. How many of you have ever read Deuteronomy chapter 28? Those are the ones where it says that if you will obey and listen to the Lord your God, these blessings will overcome you. And then it gives you a list of all these blessings. Have you ever read the cursings part? 
Yeah, you don't want to, but you got to. Okay, here's, and we were reading it this morning, and I was reading it to my wife. I said, oh, my gosh. Boy, you get into that blessing. Watch this. The only reason you want to read it is so that you can figure out if you're flowing in it. So that you can back away. That's not, uh-uh, I ain't doing that. That's the only reason you really want to read it. You want to read it to receive it. You definitely don't want to receive that you're living a cursed life. Because that's not you anymore. Jesus came into your life and gave you the blessed life. The blessing where things work. You look it up in Deuteronomy 28. It'll tell you. And read it in translations where you can understand. You'll see it in there. It says everything you do shall work. Everything you do will prosper. Why? Because it's not you doing it anymore. It's the spirit of God inside you. You can forgive, you can apologize, you can humble yourself, you can love your neighbor as thyself, you can love the Lord thy God, you can do all these things. You can get you that job, you can get that new house if you want, you can get that new vehicle, you can be rich, you can be blessed, you can be wealthy, you can make it, your family can come back to you, your marriage can be blessed, it can be restored, it can be recovered, it can. It can. Why? Not because I'm pretty and I look good and none of that. It's because you have the blessing of God flowing through your system. That's why. You can't forget that. When things aren't working in your life, Sister Jessica, hey, you know what? Hey, no, no, hold on. I, I'm living the blessed life. Hold on. No, no. Shh. I got the blessing of Abraham and the blessing of Jesus. That's how you're going to be healed, too, in your body. Because healing is attracted to the blessing. Because it even says in Deuteronomy 28 that the blessing will come upon your body. Ooh, Jesus. Are y'all ready? Come on, somebody. Some of y'all are going to come alive in this house. Watch this. Verse 13. 14 in the New Living Translation. Galatians 3. But Christ has rescued us from the curse pronounced by the law. When he was hung on the cross, he took upon himself the curse for our wrongdoing. For it is written in the scriptures, cursed is everyone who is hung on a tree. Through Christ Jesus, God has blessed us, the Gentiles, with the same blessing he promised to Abraham. So that we who are believers might receive the promised Holy Spirit through faith. That's what you received when you came to Jesus. You received the promised Holy Spirit inside you who now empowers you to live a blessed life. Are you with me? You have a spirit inside you who can now teach you. You have a spirit inside you who can now lead you. You have a spirit inside you who can now guide you. Unfortunately, the word says in Ephesians chapter 4 that you can grieve the spirit. So watch this. When you grieve the spirit, so does your soul grieve. And if you grieve and vex the spirit, another word for vex or grieve is sadden. Guess what happens to us? And now we become saddened. So some people might say, well, you mean to tell me that depression could actually be connected to the grieving of the spirit? Yeah. Yeah. So if anybody in this house is flowing in depression, I'm here to tell you right now that God gave you the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. He gave you a spirit of praise that what you can do is praise your way out of that depression. You can praise your way out of that anxiety. You can praise your way out of that circumstance. You can praise your way out of that situation. You can praise your way out, Sister Cynthia. Praise, not cumbia tazos. That's not going to do anything for us unless it's a Christian cumbia. But we can't let the releros try to take us there because they're not. Los Tigres del Norte ain't going to get you there. Lil Wayne ain't going to get you there. DJ Snake ain't going to get you there. 
Kanye West is not going to get you there. Abba is not going to get you there. But Abba Father will. Are you with me? You got to get some praise in your, in your collection of music. I understand that. Some of y'all, pues, ¿por qué está hablando de los raileros? Es, se sale. I mean, that's fine. You, you, got your, you got that. Whatever. But I'm saying add to the collection some praise because I'm telling you right now, depression loves company. Misery loves company. Cursings love company. And the cursing does its job. It's to bring you down. The cursing is meant to turn the tables against the blessing. But the blessing is there to turn the tables upon the cursing. And you can choose to speak because out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks. And we believe, therefore we speak. Out of the mouth of God, the words out of the mouth of God is how we live. Not just by eating pan dulce and bread. Are you with me? We are blessed we are blessed. I love it. Sister Roy, every single time. Sister, how you doing? I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. And she did like that three times. And she does a little dancey like this. Like she lets me know I'm moving. I'm alive. I'm well. I'm, I'm healed. Right, sister? I'm not lying. I'm not over-exaggerating. People be like, eh, she, no, really? Every time. Sister, how you doing? I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. And at Walmart, too. And at Walmart, too. Yeah. And at Walmart, too. How are you guys doing? Somebody should be doing a dance every time you do it, like Sister Aurora does. How you guys doing today? <laughs> I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Hey, blessing, I'm here. Let's go. Let's move forward. But watch, you're blessed. The only reason you're blessed is to be a blessing. Now, I talked to you last Sunday. That's why we got the, uh, the, the uh, what are they called? Backboards. Clipboards. That's why we got the clipboards up there on the wall, guys, because last week I talked to you guys about your blessing is in your serving. I said, and we get that from when Jesus served his disciples and washed their feet. You remember that story? And I said that when you serve in any capacity in any department of the ministry, it symbolizes you washing other people's feet. I mean, you're not literally doing it. But you're spiritually doing it. You're washing their feet so that they can come into service and enjoy the word of God. So that God can do something in their life. But watch this. But it's also attached to a blessing for you. Because Jesus said it. He said that now that you know these things, if you do them, God will bless you. So here's what I want to say today at the end of this service. That everyone in this house would go to one of those clipboards and find purposely somewhere to serve in this ministry. And don't just, you know, I mean, if you want to pray, that's fine. You want to pray, but God's already told us to serve. Serve one another. And then watch this. In, in the book of Proverbs, it says that he takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. That means a servant does what? Serves. That means if you're going to be a servant, how many of you on here are servants of God? That means you got to serve. That would be like me saying, I'm a plumber, but I don't plumb. <laughs> right? Right? That would be like me saying that I'm a writer, but I don't write. Well, see? I'm blessed, that means I am a blessing. I'm a servant, therefore I serve. Now, here's what I want to say to some of you. Your serving here will actually benefit your serving at home. Because here's the idea. What you do in God's house, God will do in yours. So if you can serve here and serve others, watch this, then your children won't hesitate to serve you. Mm. Your husband won't hesitate to serve you. Jesus, your wife, men, won't hesitate to serve you, even washing 
laundry. Some of y'all grunting on that one, I know. I don't wash laundry. <laughs> but are you with me? What you do here in his house, he'll do for you and yours. Everybody just blessing you. Right? Go for it. One more time. Are y'all with me? We're not living a cursed life, family. Jesus already was made a curse for us, so we wouldn't have to. But what happens then if, we're, if, 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 if he was made a curse for us for what? So that we could be a blessing. We are living a blessed life. You got to remember that. Every time the devil tries to show up with a curse, with something negative, with something bad, I am living a blessed life. I am resting in his blessing. You can't touch me. You're the curse and you're under my feet. Get out of here. I ain't got time for that. Now, let me, let me, let me give you this and I'll end here a little early t- today. So I'll give you the opportunity to go sign up. Now, if you sign up, now commit to it. Don't just sign up and you never come back to church. Like, that's it. I'm done. I ain't coming back. But I signed up. That's what Pastor wanted me to do. No. Sign up and, and serve and commit. All right? Uh, let me tell you this. For those of us in here who are building our lives with faith and the foundation of the truth in Jesus, and we are in the blessing. What's good about it is that those who are in the blessing will always find a solution to every problem because you'll always have it when you're flowing in the blessing when you're flowing in the blessing you'll always have a solution to every problem watch this though but when you're flowing in the cursing you always have a problem for every solution are you with me See, now, now, now you got to look at it. I'm giving you, that's one tidbit right there. That's one little nugget of wisdom on how to find out if you're flowing in the cursing. You begin to start making every solution a problem. No, 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 no. When you're in the blessed life, Selena, and you're walking in the blessing, you always have a solution to every problem. There's always a way out. And that, that, that mountain will not stop you. That circumstance will not stop you. That situation will not stop you. None of that will stop you because you have a solution to every problem. And that solution is the Holy Spirit living inside of you. Are you with me this morning? Stand on your feet. We're done.